Hi, Paul Sack is Good News Broadcast, speaking to Dr. Ted Baer. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Oh, it's great to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we want television programming that honors God, okay? Uh, you're the founder of Movie Guide, a family guide to movies and entertainment, and the Christian Film and Television Commission, okay, ministry, which sponsors the Epiphany uh, Prizes with the John Templeton Foundation. Movie entries are selected from an exhaustive movie guide reviews of 100% of movies that are released in nine theaters or more, okay? Really, you uh, you go, I mean, if there's a movie that's been in nine theaters here in America, is that right? Right, well, we should, and it's 98% of the movies that are nine theaters or less, which is usually the the little movies, and once in a while one will slip by, but uh, last, we're pretty exhausted. You know, uh, during the golden age of Hollywood, when Mr. Smith went to Washington instead of those other guys, and it was a wonderful <laughs> life in the bells of St. Mary Rick out the church, <laughs> was very influential through the Protestant Film Office and the Catholic Legion of Decency, and they both, it was 100% G-rated from 1933 to 1966. They didn't have the G rating, they just called them broad audience. Wait a second. The code. Excuse me for very interrupting one second. G-rated. Was that because of God? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> what was and it? And then rated? in 1966, the churches shut down because they thought everything was going so well. You had The Sound of Music, the greatest story ever told, and probably uh, the only contentious film of the year would have been Mary Poppins, and that's sort of a joke. And then three years later, after the churches left their film offices behind, you had the first, you had 82% R-rated movies, you had the first Sex and Satanism movie, the first uh, uh, ultra-sexual movie X-rated that uh, won the Academy Award. So evil will triumph when good men do nothing. And many years ago, I did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on CBS television back in 1979-1980. I was head of that company, and then uh, we uh, I decided there had to be more ways to redeem the media so we started up uh, doing uh, the work that we do now and when we started movie guide there was one movie with a positive reference uh, to jesus christ last year it was uh, 48.7 percent so we've had a significant number of changes you even have silly people like indiana jones going to church to get married so that's a positive uh, change and then you have a lot of very overt movies that are coming out like uh, fireproof and and those, and we do a lot of things to encourage the studios, including a detailed economic analysis of the box office, which helps them understand how to make more money, and, uh, and they make more money by doing things that are more uh, friendly toward faith and values. I love this, actually, Ted. I'm a reverend, interfaith minister, and uh, I'm focused on uh, just people doing nice things, and obviously, good news broadcast. The name is meaning of uh, positive thinking, positive life, life affirming. I see a lot of great movies here and uh, and good things that you're all connected to. So uh, it's it's marvelous. Congratulations. Thank you for doing it. Um, so now the uh, Epiphany Prizes. So I see here DVD entries are due December 15th. So is, is this right? So now people get you their movies that are good um, and then you'll t tell me the procedure here. Well, the, the Epiphany Prizes for movies are determined from 100% of the movies that are open in nine theaters or more. Uh, the Epiphany Prizes for television, we love submissions. We'd love people to submit to us uh, and submit what they think is good and what they like. Uh, we do ask that they be major media. Uh, they, we, in other words, we want an audience of a million more. We uh, Templeton has set down guidelines that uh, you know it's a known network or a known cable network. So we get um, great programs out of there, and uh, you know, many of the times, uh, even though we get a lot of great programs, it ends up being the Hallmark Channel programs, like the Valley of the Light last year, which was so good. But uh, and you know, it's also been things like uh, uh, Christie and uh, some really great uh, programs in the past, and we love having submissions. But it's got to be major market programs. It's got to be major. Nas nationwide, and it's got to have a significant audience. And when we talk about a million or more, you know, that's uh, that's a significant audience because Larry King often gets by with 400,000 viewers. So sure. he, many of his shows would not make it into our category. I got gotcha. you. I understand, Ashley. Uh, you know, I've got 36. I started CBS over there and uh, here in New York and then at Television City right near you. Um, early days of shows that uh, I imagine we could have submitted to you. 
Carol, well, are you still to, I used to be head of the uh, TV Center at City University of New York in the late 70s. And, oh, is that right? At Brooklyn College. And uh, <laughs> we had a great <laughs> team of engineers, Harvey Schwartz, who came from CBS. We were sort of like huh? CBS South. We, and he had, uh, I guess, invented the first uh, videotape machines and retired to become a professor and engineer at City University of New York. Uh-huh. So, great guy. Good, super. We just built out a new TV studio, uh, Green. We were in Manhattan. We just moved out to next to BAM, uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music. So we have a green studio, and things are a little hectic here because we're uh, all environmentally minded, recycled television studio from pieces of schools around the city and uh, and uh, in Manhattan on the upper. I've been a schlepper for about thirty, pl- you know, my whole life of stuff. And the guy who owns this place is a uh, we got Coney Island in here. We have all kinds of great stuff. No, I know, I know, I know where it is well. But uh, if, I used to call our, you know, even though City University got all this uh, equipment from ABC, CBS, NBC, right? Uh, we we used to call it. Uh, you know the museum of broadcasting because uh, <laughs> once equipment is used, it's uh, it's abused. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no doubt you're, de- you're dealing in. And in my day, you know, you had the two inch machines, and you uh, had the, which you don't even remember. I remember the I'm on 36 years. I got to remember that. I one time carried on two inch uh, the, when there was a strike. I carried one night. This is my first big trip to L.A. from in New York, and yeah. I was in operations. Okay, I started in on the op sheet. Okay. One day, one man, one woman, and that ran the network. And so it was a brain kind of craziest, nuttiest job. <laughs> you went into air control. It was like being in a plane or something. In any case, uh, I carry two-inch tape. I carry the, the pro network programming for the following day because we're concerned about a strike, the old two-inch big heavy tape. So that's cool. And, in fact, you got to come to our studio because i got a little two-inch thing here. we got a lot of – I'm a collector. We're all collectors here. we got a lot of, a lot of memorabilia. Have you been to the new Paley Center? No, so you remember the days when you used to balance color. That was a that was an exciting event as your show was going in and out of color. <laughs> well, I don't know if I that part. I sort of you know. I guess your video dude would be doing. Okay, that. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a key question here. Why did they call it the green room? Why did they call it the green room? Okay, and I'm <laughs> let's think on this. Because Why? In, the, in the days of black and white, yeah. people would normally look uh, uh, grayish or whatever, so they put green. Makeup, a greenish tinge to their makeup, and that gave them a, uh, a, a you know, a fuller look on the uh, black and white camera. Oh, <laughs> great, so Ted. That was the green room where they put the green. Now you can use that on the next whole <laughs> time. No, thank you. I'm pr- happy to get. And we're putting a green screen, forty foot green right. screen. We just finishing off here, and uh, so it's interesting, huh? We the, the business was environmental. <laughs> <laughs> well, during those days, you know, my father was on uh, a star in movies in the 30s. He won the box mm-hmm. office award in 36. Oh, beautiful. He was a star on Broadway for many years. And when he wasn't starring on Broadway, he played Father Knickerbocker in 48 and 49, way before your time. <laughs> I'm a 49. I'm born in 49. Okay. Well, just... Uh, it, yeah, I just missed them. So you remember Rudy Kuziti. Anyway, we should be talking about what you want to talk this about. This is what I want to talk okay. about. Movie Guide reaches Epiphany. 17th Annual Faith and Values Awards Gala announced call for entries to decide most inspiring TV program. Okay. How, now, are you have you the originator? You founded this. I love founders. I'm a founder. 17th well, Annual? Well, what we do is, saying we're a founder, you know, a lot of this comes from the old church film offices that had such a tremendously positive effect in Hollywood, and we're blessed that we've had a positive effect, and uh, we ask you to uh, keep all of that redemptive a- aspects in uh, in your prayers, and uh, if you get a chance, come to our gala on February 11th and find out who the Epiphany Prize winners are. Do you broadcast it? Oh, uh, we do. We broadcast it months later, just like the People's Choice is done in January, and they just broadcasted it. Uh, uh, we will be. Uh, m- we were already broadcast on several uh, networks, but we're we've got big networks doing it in December. So you know, broadcast lags by months. The the event itself. Not necessarily. <laughs> no, I know we've, we've we've done streaming, but once you do that, you cut out some of the major uh, networks and. So it's much better. <laughs> you got it together. Know. Well, however I can help, and Good News Broadcast can help, we'll, we'll put it up also if you want uh, another uh, show at it. Whatever you want, we'll just link over to it. Whatever helps you, we're all about, uh, we're all in it together. And so uh, uh, congratulations. I'm very honored to get a chance to speak with you, and I look forward to meeting you personally one of these days. Uh, me too. Have okay. a great day. Paul. Take care, Ted. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.